Hello everybody. Today I'll discuss about the processing technique of uh, thermoset plastics. So uh, there is a little in principle there is a little difference in the thermoset plastics. Usually you can process the thermoset plastics is the basically pure completely melting and then after melting we just try to give the shape one particular shape and following the uh, cooling process or following the curing process. This is the usual procedure for the thermosets but of course thermosets can be start from the from the powder and that but compacting with the powder but always try to reach uh, some close to the melting point temperature or above the melting point temperature and then you can take the different shape of the uh, thermosets. But the processing techniques for the thermoset plastics usually usually the compression molding, the casting and the resin transfer molding these are the three basics processes or manufacturing techniques uh, usually associated with the thermoset. So we will try to understand these three different types of the uh, processes. But of course, it is not like that uh, this all these three process always will be processed in the thermosets. Few cases we can use the thermoplastic also. Uh, for example, the compression molding can be used both for thermoplastic material plastic as well as the thermosets plastic. But it is more comfortable, more usable in case of the thermoset plastics. We will try to discuss all these techniques uh, one by one. So first technique is the for thermosets is a simply casting process. So simply casting process thermosets for example in that cases we use these different types of the thermosets epoxies, phenolics, polyester these are the different types of the thermosets we can uh, use simple casting process and this in this cases the shape uh, the varieties of the shape uh, can be either very rigid or flexible mold we can utilize uh, for the casting purpose of the thermoset plastics. We know that casting is a very slow, relatively slow process as compared to the other manufacturing process we, if we, what we have discussed uh, for the handling of the polymering material plastic components. Uh, but it is casting is a very simple and relatively inexpensive compared to the other plastic processing techniques. So in casting process simply we first uh, we create uh, this thing polymer reach uh, the low viscosity material. So basically we try to heat it and it will try to reach the low viscosity material and then in that cases uh, when you viscosity becomes low it is very easy to flow of the liquid uh, this polymer into the different intricate part of the mold cavity. So in this case first we melt it and pour into the mold cavity and if you follow uh, this process and under the mold cavity we try to allow to solidify or we can say and it takes the particular shape after solidification then we eject the component from the uh, mold cavity. So we see these are the uh, very basic casting steps associated with the other metals also but similar process technology or uh, processes we can follow in case of the uh, thermoset uh, plastics. In this case uh, may be very complex and intricate shape uh, is sometimes difficult to produce because of the any, any uh, these properties of the uh, thermosets polymer because this fluidic properties of the thermosets polymers is not exactly like a property for a liquid uh, metal and of course this uh, this polymeric material also involve uh, this uh, large amount of the elastic recovery as compared to the metallic component. So that is why in this case uh, this following simple casting operation is very intricate or very complex structure is sometimes difficult to produce but up to certain extent we can we can produce it and of course this entirely depends on the skill of the particular labor who is handling uh, this process. So it is uh, that is why it is called the labor intensive uh, processes uh, for the, uh, the it means that casting of the uh, thermo thermoset uh, plastics. Now we look into the other techniques available for the uh, thermoset plastic one is the compression molding operation. So compression molding in thermosets we understand that it is a simply we try to uh, compress uh, this uh, uh, metal component uh, or sorry uh, polymeric component and try to give the shape based on the shape of the mold. But in this compression molding of the thermosets uh, in this case this during the process entire process it becomes in the the stays hot for the entire cycle of the process. So that means when new charge that means when you try to in the new new component to produce using this uh, compression molding process. So it is not necessary to uh, uh, put another extra heating or not necessary to allow uh, the cooling in case of the thermoset. So when you handling the thermoset 
uh, in performing the compression molding operations it is necessary to keep continuous whole cycle at the uh, hot state such that even new charge is uh, admitted to this uh, system it become at that time also it becomes heat so that is the typical behavior of the uh, typical requirement in when uh, the compression molding for the thermoset plastics but it is not like when you use the thermoplastic polymer in thermoplastic polymer once uh, once we uh, one particular component is produced then for the next part uh, and means the next component has to be introduced to the uh, to the a molding platform in that cases we need to allow for cooling so after that it has to be charged new charge has to be loaded with the the uh, compression molding system so this uh, this procedure is suitable in case of the thermoplastic polymer so when we are allowing to cool down between the two different components uh, in this particular platform so in that sense the the compression molding for the thermoplastic takes much or the slow process or it takes much more time to complete the uh, process. So, this it is uh, I say this is one kind of the disadvantage for the thermoplastic polymer when you try to follow the compression molding operation. So, uh, in this sense a more fast process is the for compression molding for the thermoset plastic. So, therefore, in this case thermoset plastic such as phenolics this is amine this type of the thermosets uh, we can utilize uh, in in compression molding operation but in very special case extensive accuracy is needed in that cases compression molding is used for the thermoplastic polymer so we can understand the disadvantage of uh, processing for the thermoplastic polymer using the compression molding technique but it's advantageous in case of uh, thermoset polymer so that's why for thermoset polymer material compression molding is the most commonly used uh, manufacturing technique now we see that there are three different types of the compression molds are used or uh, uh, compression molds are usually made one is the flash type another is the positive type other is the semi positive type the flash type is the for we can use the after we can use the there is charges which are loaded the charge with the mold cavity and then we see there is a ejector pin is there and we put that always the this total volume of the charge is much higher than what is the volume of the mole cavity such that we can ensure that uh, uh, very intricate details uh, it reach the material and up, definitely after uh, pressing it with the uh, or closing the when you close the die or close the die, uh, mold cavity after that it will try to create some amount significant amount of the flash so from their parting line of the flash we can identify exactly which point uh, these two different molds are actually pressed together so this is the this is called the flash type of the the this thing uh, compression molding operation so in this case definitely we need more material which is uh, more than the this uh, volume of the the mold cavity and then all uh, and this thing uh, the once it is done the flash then uh, that after uh, removing uh, the um, compressed mold a uh, compressed mold or um, component which which we produce we need to remove the flash from this particular component so that's why you see this is the from the figure see this is the initial steps uh, for the compression molding of the thermosets using the flash type so after uh, pressing the press the parts is basically you see the flash is formed mm -hmm. so this is the i say this is the one kind of advantage is there it means that very intricate part the this the metal can flow in this intricate part but other sense we need to the post processing operation just to remove the flash is also required there is a positive type uh, compression molding but in the positive type compression molding here the mole cavity is filled with exact amount of the this uh, polymer uh, thermosets polymer and that will take part of the completely the final part component basically we will try to eliminate the formation of the flash in this particular process so such that no allowance for the excess powder is in the cavity is required in this case so uh, if you see the positive type of the compression molding operation so definitely it is uh, perfectly closed when uh, the upper half of the this uh, mold is closed to contact with the lower part of the mold cavity so it's a perfectly closed so though no excess material is come out in the form of a flash uh, during the operation so that's why it is called the positive type of the positive type mold is usually used and more producing detail and very accurate 
parts is usually use this particular because we try to avoid the formation of the flash in this particular process and if you observe this all these flash operations uh, this for the compression molding uh, we see we are handling the powder material actually so that basically we use the thermosets powder and we handle this powder heat this sample and then we press it so this is for the compression molding operations now there is another type of the uh, compression molding that is called the semi positive type so semi positive type is nothing but it's a intermediate between the positive type and the flash type so that means flash is produced in this particular process but this quantity is less as compared to the flash type compression molding so that's why it is called the the semi positive type of the uh, compression molding so in this case the mold cavity is slightly larger uh, than the charge size uh, in this cases and the charge because we put more charge uh, the slightly larger amount of the charge as compared to the the size of the mole cavity and then such that some material is flow outward in the form of a flash around the uh, around the part so semi positive mold definite the we can see this is a parting line so such that using the parting line we can control the uh, over the uh, flash thickness because in this case flash thickness is usually very small but we can anyway identify this particular parting line in, in case of the semi positive type which is similar to the the flash type uh, compression molding operation now material used for the compression molding is simply different types of the thermosets for example epoxy can be used and polyester polyamide all these different types of the material is used for the uh, compression molding of thermosets of course thermoplastic can also be used in compression molding that we have already uh, mentioned but when there is a in the very special very specific type uh, uh, very specific cases we can utilize the uh, thermoplastic polymer in case of the compression molding but in general we can say the compressing molding is more suitable for the thermoset uh, plastic now thermoplastic can also be processed using the compression molding but in this cases polyethylene polypropylene this type of the thermoset plastics uh, thermoplastics can be processed using the compression molding operation we can find out uh, the lots of application for the uh, compression uh, molded components so we can find out the electronics and electrical uh, appliances uh, components such as the insulator switch gear connector housings all this all this component can be processed uh, in using the compression molding operation some consumer goods such as kitchenware appliances parts handles knobs all can be uh, using using the compression molding operation can be produced then even medical devices such as dental device surgical instrument can also be manufactured using this compression molding operations apart from this automobile parts such as the bumpers interior panels dashboard and other kind of the automotive parts is usually manufactured using the compression molding operation so we can see that that uh, there are different types of the materials can be used in case of the compression molding and it is also we can see the lots of application of the component of the thermosets plastics following the compression molding operation now next is that uh, another processing techniques for the uh, thermoplastic uh, thermosets plastics that is called the transfer molding operation sometimes it is called the resin transfer molding operation so from the name itself we can see that uh, transfer molding is mainly thermo setting polyplastics and rubber these are the most suitable materials for the the resin transfer uh, molding operation so uh, in general it is called the further advancement of the compression molding process and in this case is because you use the both the operation compression molding as well as the transfer of the uh, liquid metal into the mold cavity both are involved in this in this particular process that's why it is called the the resin transfer uh, molding uh, process so it means that by uh, compression we pitch the we can uh, compression molding it's a it's a advancement or further development of the compression molding operations so how it works in this case that first uncured thermosetic uh, thermosetting resins is basically heated in a in a particular chamber that is called the heated it's a transfer pot or chamber or after heating it is basically injected to the mold cavity so first it is heated in the transfer pot and after heating it is injected to the mold cavity and uh, even mold cavity can also be heated in the closed mold that is also 
heated. So depending on the time of the machine, the what we can transfer the liquid resins to the mold cavity, there are different way, mm -hmm. different machines can be used. It can be simply you can use a ram, we can use a plunger or some kind of the rotating screw feeder can also be used that it will force to move the resins to transfer to the, the mold cavity. So that's which is called the transfer molding operation. So at the but it is one important part is there when during the transfer also that in the or the flow of the uh, liquid resin uh, which is transferred to the mold cavity during the transfer it is generates much significant amount of the heat generation is also associated to this particular uh, process. So that is why some rise of the temperature might happen during the transfer of the material to the uh, mold cavity and of course during the cooling phase. Uh, component it from the cross linking and cross linking because of the cross linking it becomes very harder after the, uh, the cooling process. So, since resin is the molten state when it enters to the mold the complexity of the parts. So, we try to produce it is a complex if the com parts is very complex and might be having large amount of the intricate details. So, in that cases we this process is very much suitable to achieve very good dimensional tolerances even for a uh, complex uh, uh, component and those uh, and of course the complexity and all these thing this advancements always we compare with, with the injection molding operation. We will try to discuss that we will try to compare with the injection molding operation uh, for transfer molding process. So, here you can understand the steps first. So, first is this you can use the here that for the transfer you can the plunger type of uh, thing machines to transfer the uh, resins uh, to the another cavity. So, the required amount of the resin is weighted and inserted in the transfer pot. So, this is the transfer pot you see and required amount of the resin is basically put it inside the transfer pot. The transfer pot is basically now it is heated by heating element you see there is a heating element which is uh, part of this machine. So, heating elements heat the this uh, charge the uh, polymer this charge plastic and above the melting temperature of the resin. So, above the melting temperature of the resin it is a uh, heated. Then after that it is uh, using the plunger it is passes through the sprue. So, the sprue size is very small we can see that through the sprue this is this is passed and entered into the mold cavity. So, this plunger pushes the molten polymer into through the sprue into the mold cavity. So, when it is uh, here you can see the heater is there and it is a it, uh, plunger is directly pushes it to the mold cavity you see the even mold cavity whatever it is since it is pushing through the plunger. So, whatever complex structure is there it will try to enter the liquid polymer will try to raise uh, try to reach this even for the complex com complex part of the each and every corner of the mold cavity. And once it is done then we allow to cooling of this process and after cooling we try to eject this particular process. Uh, so, that is why it is called the transfer molding uh, process. But process parameters of the transfer molding is heating line, heating time. So, how much time we are heating this polymeric component and what is the melting temperature of the polymer. So, such that you have to ensure it is the melting point temperature. Then what is the applied pressure? Uh, such that uh, it is transfer able to transfer to the mold cavity and at the same time it should enter each and the all the intricate part of the mold cavity. And after that of course, this uh, properties all depends on the what is the cooling time is or cooling rate we are following all this matters and uh, to produce a very good quality uh, component following the transfer molding operations. So, overall if we see the advantage of this uh, transfer molding is that. Uh, extremely high pressure is involved because we are using the plunger we just through the small sprue we just injecting uh, kind of things uh, to the mold cavity. So, during the injection process involved and at the same time transfer molding is suitable for the in, uh, very intricate part uh, with the inserts is there. So, that kind of part component is very precisely produced using the the transfer molding operation because through the small sprue we can inject with the high pressure the liquid uh, polymer to the mold cavity. So, uh, but problem is that there might be the encapsulation of the transfer molding is also uh, less prone to the wear sweep. So, in this case uh, sometimes uh, the transfer molding is the not uh, exactly uh, the sweeping of the completely sweeping of the uh, less prone to keep forming ki kind of the wear sweep following in this particular process. So, that is why production volume is very high 
loading time is very short loading time and the molding cycle is also less uh, equipment co cost also not much high and at the same time uniform thickness of the parts can also be achieved but there are certain problems with the, we see these are the advantages but there are certain problems also associated with the transfer molding these are transfer molding equipment is actually more expensive that compression molding equipment so we can compare it compression molding equipment as compared to that transfer molding uh, equipment is usually more expensive but there might be some wastage of the material uh, during this because it is passes through the sprue so we need to keep uh, some material within the sprue also so that's why we can say in that sense the wastage of the material is also there production is lower but lower as compared to the injection molding operations but the one thing is that when you transfer the molding in this thing so there might be happening the air can be trapped inside the mold so that can be a problem associated with the, the transfer molding operations now if you compare comparison of the molding processes so we have uh, transfer molding we have injection molding we have compression molding process we see what the different advantage and disadvantage associated with this three process now transfer molding operation we see that multiple cavities is possible to handle so that means yielding is very high so at the same time multiple cavities can uh, put it or the if uh, shape is such a complex shape is there then it is possible to achieve using the transfer molding operation relatively lower molding equipment cost relatively cycle time is also very short cycle time and low tool maintenance cost associated with the transfer molding but if you look into the others injection molding and compression molding injection molding also the surface spin is also very good good dimensional control is possible injection molding operation labor cost is also low but production rate also very high but if you look into the compression molding cycle time is short lower molding equipment cost but suitable for very thin packages multi chip modules and the wafer level packages so basically compression molding is is very suitable if you have to produce a very thin thin component thin packages so in that case compression molding is more suitable but if you want to do more intricate complex shape of the component in that case as we see the transfer molding is the most suitable uh, process but if you compare the disadvantage between these three also high molding pressure is associated with the transfer molding even it is injection module of extremely high pressure is also there but other cases we uh, high it is also associated with the compression molding also associated with the high molding pressure so all these cases we have to design the material is in such a way that it will be able to sustain this kind of the high amount of the pressure that is created during the process during the transfer of the metal to the mold cavity now molding material may be wasted because see that there is wastage of the transfer molding we see it is it is passes through the sprue so see, this metal will be kind of the wastage and thus higher material expense is associated with this transfer molding operations and some cases we see observe it is also necessary to re require some removal of the flash is also required uh, depending upon the design of the component or complexity of the component so required to remove the flash formation in injection molding the poor material availability that is a, another uh, problem associated with the injection molding a rapid tool wear because screw and the barrel wear is high is in in case of the injection molding in the so injection molding the in uh, capital investment is usually high but compression molding we see that may require for the removal of the flash formation may or may not require of the flash formation and extra cost due to the wasted metal so here also wastage of the metal is also there so we can see that all can be associated with the some kind of the wastage of the material is there and uh, the transfer molding and the compression molding but injection molding is the poor material availability because injection molding we can see during the uh, when you are injecting so so in that case uh, it might be possible that uh, the injection when there is a pressure through the nozzle so therefore availability of the metal sometimes the supply of the metal can be less uh, during the injecting of the uh, liquid metal into the mold cavity so this all the process having uh, in the sense some certain advantage and disadvantages are also there or uh, you can say all these three com uh, processes are comparable with respect to each other in applications of the different either thermoplastics material or the uh, thermo set plastics so that's all in this case i have tried to explain uh, this different uh, processing techniques associated with the thermo sets plastics so what point we remember here 
that the uh, compression molding is also suitable for the both thermosets plastics but, uh, and as a thermoplastic material. But compression molding is more suitable say that it is a thermosets polymer but less suitable in case of the thermoplastics polymer. So, thank you very much uh, for your kind attention.